Welcome to this session on Autonomous Database and the Data Lake. My name is Marty Gubar, and I'm a member of the product management team responsible for Autonomous Database's integration with the Data Lake. In this session, we'll introduce a collection of Autonomous Database features that vastly improve your data liquidity and data productivity. These capabilities simplify management, discoverability, performance, and scalability when analyzing data across your data estate. Let's take a look at it. Right? We're going to use a, an example solution called Oracle Movie Stream, which is an online movie stream scenario to see how this whole process works. Right? We'll show you data catalog and harvesting and um, querying across the sources all from within notebooks. Right. So we have uh, live labs available to you. You just click on the URLs that you see in the bottom right here, and um, you can try it and see how it all works. So let's let's head over to the demo. Okay, so our demonstration is going to start in our autonomous database machine learning notebook, and you know we're Oracle Movie Stream, and we are an online movie streaming service. And basically what we want to do is better understand our customers. Who's using our service? What types of movies are they purchasing? Etc. And what we're going to do is we're going to show how you're easily able to combine information that's in your data lake with data that's in your data warehouse and also help you find the information that you need to successfully analyze your data. All right, so we're starting with looking at information that's in our warehouse, right? So I'm running this query of my top sales broken out by city. This is coming from my warehouse. And I can see, you know, all of the sales information for these top cities. And New York is clearly by far we have the leading sales. And, and when I drill into that, like, well, what other information do we have about customers in our warehouse? And, and basically, when I look at our customer data, we have customer contact information, right? So here we're just saying, hey, let's select everything from customer contact. And we have our last name, first name, mail, email address, where they live, how long they've been a customer, do they respond to promotions? So, you know, some very high level information, but it doesn't necessarily give me a flavor for our user community, our customers. Who are they? What do they like to watch necessarily? So let's see if there's other information available to us that can help us better understand customer profiles. Now, to do that, I'm going to start by saying, hey, you know, we have a data lake right and our data lake captures information in the object store this is a picture of the object store we have buckets we have our gold zone a landing zone a sandbox you know if i look at the landing zone these are files right files have landed we have that customer contact information oh we have some third-party data we call it customer extension um we also have pizza locations because we're partner with uh, a third party for local promotions. So we have this information that's in our landing zone. And then we have what we call our gold zone. This is our curated part of our data lake where we have things like sales to existing customers broken out by movie and genre. And if I look at my customer sales, you can see this is an optimized format, right? We have it broken out by month, call these partitions. And then when I look in a given month, I have this data stored in parquet format. So I have a very efficient way of storing my data in the data lake. So I have files, I have folders. That's basically what I have. I want to understand this data more. So I'm going to go to the data catalog. Now the data catalog enables me to define what we call data assets, right? So I'm going to go to the data assets and you can see that I have one called the data lake and another called our data warehouse. 
So to a data asset, you know, Data Catalog supports numerous data assets. So you can create a data asset over Hive, transact, uh, autonomous data tran uh, transaction processing, DB2 Kafka, Azure SQL database, all these different sources, including Oracle Object Store. So that's what we've done here in the data lake is that we've created a data lake asset. We actually harvested that source, right? So we connected to it. We, we created this asset. And then we went through what we call a harvesting process that collects information about that. So you say, hey, I'm going to run a harvest over my source, let's say over this landing zone, and say, yeah, I want to actually uh, harvest everything in that bucket. Okay, so it's now going to scan that source, it's going to scan the landing zone. And what it does is it will derive what we call um, logical entities and folders. Right, so if I go to the data lake, we can see that gold zone, that landing zone. And within the gold zone, for example, we have, um, I can drill down on it and see my customer sales, my customer contact information, information about movies. Well, I'm really interested in searching actually for information about customer. So I could have thousands of logical entities, but I really am interested in stuff about customer. So here's all the stuff that's coming back about customer, customer segment, customer contact, uh, lifetime value of my customer, right? We have uh, 57 items actually that have come back and I'm going to refine this search and say, well, you know, I'm really interested in things that are coming from the data lake that are what we call logical entities. And when I look at my different logical entities, I see, oh, the uh, in the object store, we had that customer extension. You remember we saw that folder. And if I look at customer extension, yeah, customer extension actually has some really interesting attributes about my customer. Let me get a better or fuller view. Their household size, are they married? Um, you know, do they have a mortgage? All this, this is third party data that we purchased. It's not part of the warehouse necessarily. It's just in our landing zone. And if we, uh, go back and look at a summary of customer extension, you can see its description that says, um, this is demographic uh, data from a third party and it's approved for analytics use. Okay, that's great. So um, this is customer extension is, is some interesting information that I may want to look at within, uh, I may want to start querying from within ADB. So I'm going to go back to my machine learning notebook. And I actually went back here and I queried the date, the object store directly from within autonomous database. I said, Hey, I want to select all of the entities that have something to do with customer, right? So this is a query that's going back to that same data catalog instance, right? And you notice that when I scroll down at the query result, you can see that customer extension data in the landing zone. Its classification is silver. It's customer demographic details approved for analytics use. That's what we just saw. And here is actually within autonomous database, the schema and the table name within ADB that I can now query. So um, we also have something called customer segmentation that is, is another table that is interesting that came from our, our data lake. And this has been derived by our data science team. Right. And what they did is they've, um, they, they segmented our customer base based on these various attributes, um, and how they map to our data sets. Right. So now I'm just, if I want to look at my customer segmentation, right here, you can see a breakout of them under 22 single females. 
this is a query that's just it looks like any other select statement that is going against Oracle. In this case, it's getting customer segment from this managed schema called um, the landing zone. And when I go to look at the customer demographics, all that information that we just saw in data catalog described is right here. Their email, their age, their commute distance, their credit balance. So this is simply a query against that demographic data coming from the data lake. Finally, I can combine that information. I can say, hey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that customer contact information coming from the warehouse, and I'm going to combine that with information coming from my data lake. So at this point, I'm just running queries against both the data lake as well as the data warehouse frankly, not having to worry about the fact that, oh, customer extension is a parquet file or a series of files. Customer segment is, I don't know, CSV. You don't care. You're querying this data like you would any other data and you're combining it. So now this is a report that is blending both. At this point, I can run a query that says, hey, I'm now going to look at my customer sales data combine that with genre information and that customer segmentation and that uh, those customer demographic information. And I get a much better view of my customers. Like double income, no kids seem to be very much interested in dramas. Whereas uh, if you're under 22, adventures are, are, are more interesting. Uh, divorced and widowed people uh, are looking for a laugh, right? So you know, it's a way of, we've just now started with data in our warehouse. We said, okay, I want to find information that can give me different kind of insights into my customers. Who are they? What are they buying? Um, who's at risk? We have other queries below. They're, they're saying who's at risk, et cetera, right? All of these queries are blending information from your warehouse with data that's in your data lake, and you're doing this seamlessly. So in a nutshell, here's the major takeaways. The uh, lake house is a system that enables us to look at our data in totality. Autonomous databases integration with lake house allows you to automatically leverage the metadata, the centralized metadata that's in your data lake coming from the data catalog, removes the management required for accessing that data from within the data warehouse. It automatically defines managed schemas and tables, and then you unleash Oracle SQL on top of all of that data. And you do that efficiently by scaling out queries using specialized processing. So I hope this was a helpful session. Um, I thank you very much for attending. Thanks a lot.